Welcome to the Intel FPGA online training presentation, ECPRE Intel FPGA IP Architecture and Interfaces. My name is Marlon Price and I'll be the presenter. This training is the second in a series of courses designed to help you become familiar with Intel FPGA's IP solution targeting the Enhanced Common Public Radio Interface or ECPRE protocol. By the end of this course, you will be able to describe the architecture and functional blocks that make up the EC Pre Intel FPGA IP. From there, you'll learn how packets are routed and processed by the IP core. Finally, you'll learn about the interfaces found on the IP core that you will use to connect your own transport and application layer logic. In this training, we will start with a look at the IP's functional blocks. Then we'll study the incoming and outgoing packet flows and how they're handled by the IP. In the last section, we will study the various interfaces on the IP for connection. This training assumes that you have a good understanding of the ECPRE protocol as we'll not spend much time defining its details. The course also assumes you're familiar with the Intel Cordis Prime Pro software tool suite and its design flow when targeting FPGAs. And while it's not required, a good understanding of Intel FPGA architecture is also helpful. If you have further questions or require any more details on any of the Intel 5G IP or the 3GPP or EC pre specs, here are links to some resources. So we'll start with a look at the EC pre IP functional blocks. This diagram displays the main functional blocks found in the ECPRE Intel FPGA IP. Let's take a deeper look at these blocks and what they do. Starting from the FPGA fabric side, highlighted now is the ECPRE IWF Type 0 block. Like we learned in the Getting Started training, it is there to bridge between CPRE IP protocol and the ECPRE IP logic behind it. So it is only instantiated in the IP when IWF Type 0 support is enabled. Here to its right you can see the interface available for connecting to the CPRE MAC. Highlighted now is the core of the ECPRE transmit and receive logic. In the transmit path near the bottom, moving from the FPGA fabric to the left, you can see the header mapper and concatenation blocks. The header mapper appends the EC pre common header to the outgoing message received from the fabric. The concatenation block can then concatenate multiple of these EC pre messages into a single Ethernet frame or IP UDP packet. Sideband signals are provided to monitor signal concatenation. In the receive path at the top, Moving from the IP core into the FPGA on the right, you can see the header deconcatenation and header demapper blocks. The header deconcatenation block returns concatenated messages back to their original EC pre message. The header demapper block removes the EC pre header from the incoming message and forwards into the FPGA logic. The CSR block at the bottom contains and provides access to all of the configuration registers for the IP core. The special EC pre message 5 parser block is used to initiate one-way delay measurement calculations. It is used to remove the transport delay from transmitting side to receiving side. We'll talk more about this later in the presentation. Next is the Ethernet frame section. For outgoing EC pre messages on the transmit path, the Ethernet header insertion block adds an Ethernet header to EC pre messages. It can optionally add IPv4, IPv6, or UDP headers to the packet according to how the IP core is configured. For incoming EC pre messages on the receive path, the Ethernet header removal block removes an Ethernet header from the EC pre message. It can optionally remove IPv4, IPv6, and UDP headers as well. 
The final section is the L2, L3 parser section. Within this section are the packet classifier and the packet queue. For the transmit path, the packet queue stages the incoming Ethernet frames coming from the external streaming sync interface and performs arbitration between them and the EC pre packets coming from the core. For the receive path, the packet classifier accepts Ethernet frames from the MAC and detects the packet format. From there, the packet classifier routes packets to either the EC pre IP interface or the external streaming source interface. We'll talk more about the operation of these blocks and their interfaces in upcoming slides. Now that you're familiar with the blocks inside the IP core, let's take a look at the interfaces and how the messages and packets flow through the IP core. In this section, we'll start with the packet interfaces to the IP and then look at how the packets are prioritized during routing. We then take a quick look at the CSR interface and the IP's required clocks and resets. We'll end with some additional interfaces of which you should be aware. The IP core has two source and sync interfaces for sending and receiving packets. The EC pre IP source and sync interfaces are for sending and receiving EC pre message packets. The external streaming source and sync interfaces are for sending and receiving EC pre CNM plane and synchronization packets as well as any other type of frame packets such as Ethernet or IPv4. This slide demonstrates how general EC pre message packets flow through the IP core using the numbered arrows. Number one, you have an EC pre message packet coming in. The header mapper will append the common header to it. Concatenation may also take place based on a user controlled signal in the sync interface. Number two, the Ethernet header block will insert the Ethernet header and send to the MAC. Three, on the receive side, the Ethernet packet containing an EC pre message passes through the packet classifier. The Ethernet header will be removed by the Ethernet header removal block. And four, decatenation is performed if needed and then this EC pre header block removes the common header and then the final payload is forwarded to the user. Note that if the IWF type 0 block is enabled, then the packets originate as C pre frames in the core logic and are converted to EC pre messages. And the responses are converted back to C pre frames. This slide highlights the PTP synchronization and CNM flow again using the numbered arrows. One, the PTP and CNM packet are presented to the IP through the external streaming sync interface. Remember, this is also the interface used for other non EC pre message packets. This packet is presented directly to the packet queue. Two, the IP forwards the packet to the MAC interface for transmission. Three, on the receive side, the packet classifier block parses the packet, detects that it is either a non EC pre packet or it is an EC pre packet with a non matching MAC address and routes it to the external streaming source interface. When either the external streaming source or sync interface are used, no additional processing is performed by the IP core. So all transmit and receive processing of the packets must be performed by user-defined fabric logic. Since EC pre-messages, CNM packets, PTP synchronization packets, and other frame types can all be sent and received through the IP, the IP performs arbitration to determine the order in which packets are sent on to the Ethernet MAC. PTP synchronization packets are given the highest priority, followed by EC pre packets, and then lastly by any other packet type, including CNM packets. When a PTP synchronization packet and an EC pre packet arrive simultaneously, the back pressure pauses the EC pre packet. A packet counter with a programmable threshold are used to ensure PTP synchronization and EC pre packets do not completely starve other CNM packets from being sent. 
This diagram highlights how arbitration works. One, PTP and CNM packets are coming in. Two, at the same time we have EC prepackets coming in through packet transmission. So there's a collision between the packets. Three, priority arbitration determines that the PTP packet will go first, the CP packet is next, and any CNM packets are allowed after that. One thing to note is that if an EC prepacket transmission is already in process, it will finish before the higher priority packet is sent. So, for example, if the IP is in the middle of sending a 1500 byte EC prepacket and a PTP packet comes in, the IP will first complete the existing packets and then it will prioritize the PTP packet after that. The CSR interface is a memory mapped interface used to access the IP's internal register map for reading and controlling IP configuration settings and features. Using the CSR interface, you can do things like program MAC, VLAN, IPv4, and UDP addresses to be used for packet filtering and routing, issue EC pre message 5 packets, and read, write, clear, and mask EC pre errors. Use the link on this page to view the complete IP register map. Here we have an example of using the CSR interface to perform the EC pre one-way delay measurement on the transport link. This flow requires the Ethernet IP PTP hardware to work. So if the Ethernet MAC is selected without the PTP or when using another vendor's Ethernet MAC without PTP, then this feature would be disabled or not supported. This measurement can be performed with or without a follow-up message. One, you write to the EC pre message 5 control register. Two, the IP then issues a message 5 request packet to the MAC for transmission, adding to it a timestamp value taken from the time of day management block. And three, the message 5 response packet with timestamp and compensation value from the PTP are received and from this the transport delay is determined. The EC pre IP CSR space contains many registers for monitoring and handling IP and transmission error conditions. For example, there are registers that flag for things like buffer overflows, ECC errors, packet errors, and timeout errors. These registers are all documented in the EC pre Intel IP user guide cited earlier in the presentation. There you'll find the error conditions checked, the register and bit locations used for logging, how the IP behaves when these errors occur, and the recommended response from your system. This table provides some examples of error conditions and recommended mitigations from your logic if necessary. Feel free to pause the slide and look through the table if you wish. As mentioned in the last slide, these and more can be found in the user guide. For clocking, the clock TX and clock RX signals on the IP core must be driven with either 156.25 MHz or 390.625 MHz clocks depending on the Ethernet version. The configuration interface clock CSR must be connected to a 100 to 162 MHz source. The external streaming interface runs off the external sync clock signal which must be clocked at greater than 390.625 MHz. The MAC clocks MAC clock TX and MAC clock RX are driven by clocks generated by the transmit and receive interface clocks from the Ethernet IP. For resets, the reset TXN and reset RXN IP signals are inputs to the EC pre IP from the Ethernet MAC. The reset CSRN signal is an input that resets the IP control and status registers. Again, please see the user guide for the complete list of IP clock and reset signals. Finally, here we want to highlight a few other interfaces found on the IP core. There is the Ethernet interfaces to connect to the Ethernet MAC. 
This includes the PTP and time of day interfaces. The ORAN interface signals TX Transport CU and RX Transport CU appear when ORAN IP pairing is enabled. Lastly, when IWF Type 0 is enabled, then additional interfaces appear for connecting to CPRE logic. These include the IWF interfaces and the CPRE MAC interfaces. That concludes our look at the architecture and interfaces of the eCPRE Intel FPGA IP. In this training, you learned how the blocks found in the eCPRE Intel FPGA IP work to process eCPRE and other packets in the system. This will help you best plan for how to employ the IP in your own front hall application. You also learn the interfaces found on the IP core so you can connect your own transport and application layer logic. Intel provides multiple avenues in which to learn about Intel FPGA products. There is the Intel FPGA YouTube channel which contains 5-minute quick videos along with longer, more in-depth training videos. There is the Intel FPGA training website where you can access e-learning courses made up of narrated slides presented in an interactive player, some courses with labs and demos. Lastly, you can enroll in a live instructor-led course presented either in person at a local office to you or virtually over the web. All instructor-led courses have hands-on lab exercises to practice the concepts you learn. If you need more assistance, Intel FPGA provides many self-help resources for you to access. For example, there are web pages called landing pages dedicated to specific FPGA technology like high-speed interfaces. You can also view and post questions to the community forum which is monitored by skilled Intel FPGA applications engineers. When you register for this training, a link was sent to you in your confirmation email that links to a short online survey. Please complete the survey to let us know what you think of this training and if you have any ways you think it can be improved. This concludes this online training. Again, my name is Marlon Price, and thank you for attending.